Um, Dave was there. Um, difficulty or difficult conversations at the selection table. There's obviously been a few um, positions that were highly contentious. Um, the makeup of the back row, um, who to pick at ten. Um, I guess probably starting with ten. What was the thought process uh, in picking Quaid over James and, and Noah? Um, yeah, I'll go back a step. Uh, yeah, there were a lot of um, challenging decisions, which is a good thing. Um, you know, as we've talked about, we're, we're creating more depth and more competition for places. So, so that's a positive. Um, yeah, I, I, we left James out of a mix. He's not quite sharp enough yet. Um, obviously, he's missed a big chunk of the second part of the year. Didn't, didn't play many of the Kiwi games and had two different injuries. And while he's back and fit and available, um, just lacks a bit of sharpness um, you know, around skill set. Everything's a lot quicker. The training and and so uh, yeah, look, he's um, he's aware of that, and um, we altered training a little bit for him uh, uh, today to allow him to focus on that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, but uh, you know, not not a not a disaster from that point of view. Nor has played very well. Uh, we've got a lot of confidence in him. He's trained very well. Um, Quaid brings a calmness. Um, you know, obviously, ex massive experience and and has trained very well. Just on the back row, um, what was <clears> the, <throat> the deciding factor for uh, that makeup? The Otis six, um, Balotini eight, and obviously Michael um, selects himself there at seven. But um, you know, as I said, contentious um, makeup, and people were debating. Does Wilson get in there? Do you go with Leota in the combination? What was sort of the deciding factor? Uh, I, I thought Harry was excellent um, against the other Aussie sides early. Uh, not the same impact um, and against New Zealand sides. Um, yeah, look, there's not much there, though. He's, um, Harry's gone well. He's, he's worked really hard. Um, you know, Rob... Rob gives us genuine go forward and carry, uh, as does Bobby. Um, you know, they're, they're very big men, uh, good both sides of the ball, and and look, beyond also it's not far away. It was um, it wasn't a straightforward decision. We had a lot of discussion around it over a number of days, so uh, that, that was probably one of the tighter decisions. But uh, you know, Pete Samu, he's on the bench because he just gives us versatility. Can genuinely play six, seven, eight. Um, yeah, chances are if Hoops um, can go the distance, then you know he'll play 80, and and we know that Pete can fill a hole elsewhere. But um, he generally gives us seven cover. Dave, can you give us an update on Taniella Tupo? Obviously, didn't make this team, and also I'll chuck my second question in. You've got two debutants there in Pareki and Neville in rugby terms. They're of advanced years. Can you talk about them? And, and the value that some old soldiers like that give you? Yeah, Pato, um, has gone well here. It was a significant injury. We always hope we get him right in time for the first test. Um, you know, medics and s and boys have done a great job with him. He yeah, was looking at one stage that he might not take part at all in the, in the English series. Uh, we're very confident he'll get back on the park uh, next week. He's had a reasonable... Um, week of training, uh, trained against the the uh, starting team today, and and got through that well. So um, it gives us plenty of confidence going into next week. Um, yeah, and the two boys on debut, uh, great stories, aren't they? You know, um, taking a long route to get to a Wallaby jersey. Um, yeah, got a genuine hunger and a thirst. I, I look at Nev, you know, 33 years old, but. If you'd seen him training, um, he's a really good athlete. He's been getting around the park. He's a big man, 124, 125 kilos. So um, very, very important to us from a set piece point of view. Very good at mall, line out, scrum. Um, so yeah, I like it from a perseverance point of view. It's a great story. Uh, and likewise with Dave Pericky, spent a lot of time over London mm -hmm. Irish and. Um, came back, he, 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 we would have picked him last year had he not got injured late. So, um, again, great great for both those guys and you know, awesome for them and their families. 
And Dave, um, heavy Brumbies contingent, obviously, um, 12 from my count. Um, is that a sign that you want to, um, you know, take a lot of those things from the set piece as well as the rolling more and, and implement that more in this Wallaby squad? Because that's that's not necessarily traditionally how Australian rugby fans or, or players would have seen Wallaby sides play. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, you know, the mall, the line-out mall is a massive part of the game now and if you don't have a genuine threat up front, it's pretty easy to defend beyond that. So you got a good mall, you know, teams have to spend a bit of time working out how they're going to defend it and they're going to have to use some bodies to do it, which creates opportunities elsewhere off that. So, um, yeah, oh, look, you know, Brumby's clearly our best side, clearly our best performing side, and but we're, we're picking individuals. And so, um, you know, we're really happy with the group. Um, and there was a couple of that were tight, um, you know, Tate versus Jake, for example, um, in the, uh, the Spear 9 jersey. Um, but, yeah, like, like I say, we've spent a lot of time on this and really happy with the mix. I think, uh, you know, we've got a squad of complementary players and complementary uh, skill sets. Can you just extend upon Tate's... Um, uh, well, Jake pick, uh, being picked over Tate? Yeah, I was tight. Um, you know, you would, you'd say that, you know, Jake and Whitey uh, had excellent seasons. Um, Tate was good. I, I guess it's, it was harder for him in the final couple of months against New Zealand sides where, they, you know, they struggled as a group too. But, um, yeah, oh, look, we, we thought, I mean, Whitey's been outstanding. Jake's had a fantastic season. Oh, look, I reckon it's a really highly competitive position and, and um, yeah, Tate's trained really well over the last couple of weeks and putting a lot of heat on, but uh, we wanted a reward um, form from Super Rugby. Just, just looking at that bench, I mean, uh, you have guys like Slips, Seo, Fanga, Philip, all really experienced guys. I mean, I mean, compare that to last year, you had four debutants. I was just kind of wondering, what does that show about the growth of this side and the growth of depth that's kind of emerged in that world he set up? Yeah, look, like it's, it's, it's important going forward, isn't it? And, you know, we picked a lot of young men over the last couple of years who've now, you know, got their foot in the door and cemented a place in, in the Wallabies. So, um, you know, it also helps. We've got a lot of guys who've been with us in the past. You know, we had two weeks to prepare. And, uh, we haven't had these boys since November last year. So um, certainly that continuity has helped. Um, you know, no doubt, obviously, Dan and the continuity and connection he has with the Brumbies boys. and um, So, yeah, yeah, it's um, certainly a lot more competition for places. Dave, did you have um, an idea of what your starting 15 or your 23 was going to look like when you first entered camp? Um, I'm sure you probably had a few ideas, but is this is this close to that, or have some guys really surprised you in the couple of weeks you've been training together? No, oh, we've had a couple of injuries, which which has changed things. Um, well, obviously, Tanayale, you'd expect to be in the mix. Um, but Jed Holloway uh, is, is unlucky; he's, he's picked up a, a minor injury, which has meant he's unavailable. Um, but you know, yeah, look, we've been picking sides all year. Um, I think a guy who's really impressed me has been Scott Seal. Um, you know, we left him home at the end of, of the end of year tour. Uh, he had a really good off season. Uh, he's played very well for the Brumbies and probably in the best nick he's been in a lot of years. And and so it's great to see him back in the group and and also in the 23 this weekend. Dave, uh, what did Angus Bell show you this season that <clears throat> suggests he's ready to really step up and, and how much is his selection, I guess, a result of, of Taniella not being available and really getting that ball-carrying threat that he brings? Yeah, obviously, um, look, Benny's had a fantastic year. Um, you know, he's, look, he's a young man who's, you know, already played, what, 15 tests or somewhere around there. Uh, poor bugger, he's still the youngest in the squad, so he has to carry Wally around everywhere and... Um, but yeah, look, he's <clears throat> he's been excellent. Uh, scrummed really well. Uh, we know he's a big man and he's mobile. 
um, but genuine go forward with ball in hand and and so you know he's, he's certainly earned the right to wear the one jersey. Dave, I suppose the question being uh, okay. eight straight defeats against England, and I know only one of them has come under your name, but is the is the indication of the Brumbies' um, pack dominance, twelve of them in there, a sign that you, you've got to beat them up front, and that you're not necessarily going to try to run rings around England? Oh no, we still we still want to play, um, but there's no doubt that it'll be a focus for them. You know, um, you know, big scrum. They've got a very big pack, and they've brought back a fair bit of experience. We think, you know, assuming uh, they name uh, who we expect them to name, and yeah. So, you know, the line out the more um, you have a scrum, a, a big aspects of your game, and um, you know, they'll they'll want to scrum and maybe scrum for penalties to to get territory and put us in the corner and or kick for the post. So, uh, it's an area that. You know, we feel if we can overshadow them, then it gives us an you know, opportunity to get our game going and, and put a bit of heat on at the right end of the field. So uh, there's no doubt at international level, you haven't got a group of men functioning up front, you're not going to win. And are you surprised that Eddie hasn't really fired any shots yet? Or, or did, you, did you see him uh, taking this kind of tact? Um, oh, look, I think he's probably got the same mindset as me. You know, it's, it's not about us, it's about... It's about the players and, you know, we'll let them do the talking. Hi, Dave. It's, it's Will here from The Times. How's it going? Hey, Will. Um, just picking up on that point, when you're talking about the set piece, the scrumming wall, is that an, an area you think you can best England in? There's a chink in their armour there? Or is it trying to stop them more than trying to attack them with those selections that you've made? No, look, I, we've got a pretty big pack as well, haven't we? Um, now, we've got a lot of powerful athletes, as they have, and, and that's the nature of the game nowadays. Um, but yeah, look, I, oh, we've got confidence in our set piece. Um, yeah, we've got, there's a fair bit of continuity there, there's strong connection, and you know, we've, we've got a scrum that we think uh, can be competitive with anyone, so even with Tani Allen missing. So, and we 